Hey guys, I'm Alphonse. Welcome to the 15th episode of Anybody Can Code C Programming Series. If you'd like to take a look at the previous episodes, please use the link in the description. In today's episode, we'll be looking at recursions in C programming. First, what are recursions? The process in which a function calls itself or itself directly or indirectly until a base condition is satisfied is called recursion and the corresponding function is called recursive function. There are two types of recursion. First is the direct recursion. In direct recursion, say a function A calls itself again and again until a base condition is satisfied. The next type of recursion is the indirect recursion. In indirect recursion, suppose say there are two functions, function A and function B. Function A calls function B and function B in turn calls function A and this goes on until a base condition is satisfied. So these are the two types of recursion in C programming. So next, let's look at an example to better understand the working of a recursion. Here, we are given a program to find the factorial of a number using recursion. So first, let's get the input from the user. I'm receiving the input from the user in the variable num. Next, let's go and write a function. So this function will be returning a value. So, so the return type of this function would be int. And I'm calling the function name as factorial. and it would be receiving one argument, which is the one that we are passing from the main function. So, the base condition for this function is this condition num equal to 1 or num equal to 0. That is, we are uh, telling the function to stop the recursion when the condition is, uh, when the value of num is 1 or 0. So as you can see, we are done with the we are done with writing the function. So in the sixth line, if you notice, this is the base condition, and in the ninth line, if you notice, here we have a statement num into factorial of num minus one. So this factorial of num minus one keeps calling the same function. That is, it keeps calling itself again and again until the base condition num equal to 1 or num equal to 0 occurs. I'm writing the calling statement. And I'm printing the output. So now let's go ahead and run a program.
so I am giving the number as 5 as you can see the factorial of the given number is being calculated so let's trace how this program actually works so since our input is 5 and the value 5 is passed to the uh, function factorial first time it checks if number is equal to 1 or 0 so the condition is false so it goes to the else statement here the statement is num into factorial of num one minus 1 so say so the value of num is 5 into so the factorial of num minus 1 is 4 and next time the value of num is 4 so 4 into factorial of 3 so this goes on until this goes on until the value of num is 1 So as you can see, when the factorial, when the value of num is 1, it comes, it, it actually satisfies the if statement and the value of 1 is returned. So the factorial of 1 returns the value 1. So which comes to the, the next function, which is 2 into factorial of 1. In the place of factorial of 1, the value 1 is returned. So here the value that is being calculated, so here we get the value as 2. So this in turn goes back to the function by which it was called. So here we have 6. And this 6 is returned to the function by whom it was called. And now the value calculated is 24. And next, that value is returned again back to the function by whom it was called. So in this case, factorial of 4. And 24 into phi it's 120 so now we do not have any other functions uh, fu function calls before that and hence we have uh, come to the end of this function and the value 120 is returned back to the main function uh, which is stored in the variable fact and the factorable and uh, and hence we are printing the factorial of the given number using the variable fact and we are able to get the right output so next, let's understand the memory allocation for recursive functions. When a function is called from the main function, the memory for that function is allocated on the stack. When recursive function calls itself again and again, the memory for recursive functions, that is the memory for the successive functions is allocated memory on one top of the other in the stack. When the base condition is satisfied, the function returns its value to the function by whom it was called and the memory gets deallocated and the process continues until the control is given back to the main function. So next, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of recursion. The advantages of using recursion is that it is simple and it reduces the complexity of the code. Problems like tree traversals and towers of NI, etc. are coded using recurs recursion. Next is the disadvantage of th using recursions. The disadvantage of using recursions is that it consumes a lot of processor time and it also takes up a lot of stack space. Next is that if you 
if the base condition is not correctly specified, it can lead to a stack overflow. Let's look at a pro program and modify it in such a way that it causes a stack overflow error. Say our base condition here is num equal to 1 or num equal to 0. Suppose say I want to change this base condition and I want to give it as num equal to 10 which is absurd because that is meaningless here. So let's go and run this program to see if it is calculating the value. So I'm giving the number as 5 as before. As you can see, we have received an error called segmentation fault core dumped, which tells us that the base condition is false and we have to change our base condition. With this, we come to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking at the scope of variables in CA programming. So stay tuned. Hey YouTube, how are you doing? Stay tuned to Facebook for more awesome videos. Don't forget to subscribe.